and we are joined by Brian Carver, who's running for City Council position two. So go ahead with a two minute introduction. Sure. Thank you for having me here to speak with you all this evening. Um, so my name is Brian Carver, and I'm running for Seattle City Council position two. This is the seat currently held by Richard Conlon. I'm seeking your support today because I know that together we can do more to prepare Seattle for the future. To ensure that people from all neighborhoods feel safe and have access to great education, advancing career opportunities, affordable housing, and transportation choices that make sense. For the past decade, I've worked at Amazon.com, and for the past few years, I've been a senior leader in the Kindle organization. Together with my colleagues, we've developed new ideas and innovations that have revolutionized the book publishing industry for the better. Our team created a place where anybody can self-publish using the emerging ebook technology to bring their truths into the world. And I want to bring that spirit of democratization and empowerment to our city government. We need to do more to ensure that people from all neighborhoods have access to great education. There are three main things that I'm going to be focused on. That's one of them is the education. Another is advancing career opportunities. And also, we need to stay true to what has made Seattle economically strong and a destination for community-minded individuals, entrepreneurs, and innovators, our progressive values. Recently, my opponent was the sole vote against common sense sick leave legislation. Luckily, the rest of the council did vote against him and overruled the, the vote so that we can still have uh, a place where people can work with dignity here in Seattle. So tonight, I just ask you to join me as we work to make Seattle a better place, and I look forward to discussing with you all further. And I'll ask for you to vote for me as your next member of Seattle City Council. Great, thank you. So now we have five prepared questions we're asking all City Council candidates. Two minute answers to each of these. I think we left off. Michael, would you do number one? Sure. So, what is your strategy for implementing, leveraging, and perhaps improving the incentive zoning program to create diverse neighborhoods and assure affordable housing? Yeah. So, I think an interesting uh, use case here is the recent discussion around the South Lake Union zoning. And uh, I think it's important that we increase the fees that we're charging for development, especially. Uh, with the focus of incenting the development to actually happen in the neighborhood where the jobs are being created. The reason for that, mixed income housing is going to help us so that people can live where they work and they don't have to spend as much time commuting in their cars. Of course, it's important to also develop transportation systems that help move people from neighborhood to neighborhood, but the, the mixed income housing is a great way to ensure a more equitably uh, econo economically equitable distribution of our society so that people in all neighborhoods have similar investments in things like education and other uh, infrastructure. So in terms of what can we do to uh, improve the zoning, uh, that's one thing is we need to improve the fee, increase the fees, set it at a level where development will still happen, but at a level where we can actually achieve our affordable housing goals. That, uh, in, for the South Lake Union discussion, I think we reached a, a, an agreement that's acceptable for, for where we are, but I think we could have done more to make sure that that affordable housing actually happened in, uh, in South Lake Union. Okay, Elizabeth, number two. In your view, what is the city's role in assuring equal educational and achievement opportunity in Seattle's public schools? Yeah, so, uh, I think there's a couple things that we can do from the city government. One of them is we need to invest more in early learning programs. While we've done a great job by doubling the investment in the families and education levy, there's a lot more we can do. For early learning, we need to ensure that kids in all neighborhoods have the skills they need so that they can learn when they enter our public schools. We know that this is one of the biggest things that impact the achievement gap. Another thing that we can do is to continue our work on improving attendance. We also know that you know, if, some, if kids miss more than 10 days of school, their chances of graduation plummet. So whatever we can do in the city to incent this by partnering with local businesses and, uh, and also the schools to create those incentives, that's gonna help kids stay in school so they can learn and, and graduate. 
Uh, and a third thing is actually related to what I was talking about earlier. If we can drive better distribution of uh, uh, mixed income housing and, and opportunities, then the investments that are made are going to be more equitable across the city. So you don't end up with neighborhoods that have predominantly lower income people that then also are not investing in as much in that particular school. So I think all those things are very important. Jack number three. All right, voters passed the Parks and Green Spaces Levy in 2008. We've experienced cutbacks in staffing and facilities since then. When the levy is up for renewal next year, how can it be constructed to assure voters that their tax dollars will be allocated wisely? Yeah, so I think it's important when, when we come to the levy time that we make sure that we're budgeting sufficient funds to fund whatever we need for the parks. To, in Seattle. We know that the parks are one of the most valuable assets we have here in Seattle. Everyone loves coming here because of all the natural beauty we have. And we need to maintain that open space for the community to come together and thrive. Uh, so number one is understanding what is it gonna cost? So we need to do a detailed analysis about what are we gonna be spending in the years to come and what percent of those that budget is gonna come from this particular levy versus other funds. If we wanna ensure that the uh, the budget is met, then we might need to make sure that the levy covers the bulk of that budget as opposed to assuming it's going to come from the general fund. Joseph, number four. There will likely be two types of election reform on the ballot this fall, district elections and public financing of campaigns. Do you support either or both of these and why? Yep. So I, I do support both of these. I know that there's a lot of pros and cons to, to both of those. For publicly funded uh, elections, I think it's important that we increase the diversity on the city council, and that's part of why I'm running. I think, uh, you know, we, we need to, uh, the cost to running an election is huge, as you all know. I think the average winner has spent uh, over one hundred and fifty to $200,000 on, on any of the city council campaigns, and that's a lot of money to raise for somebody who may not have a, lot, a large network. Uh, from wealthy individuals, or is not that uh, well connected yet, and, and but they really want to get involved in service. So publicly funded campaigns uh, are an important way to increase the diversity on, on city council. For districting, I also think it's important uh, because it'll it'll also in sense increase diversity on the council. We know that Seattle has mixed neighborhoods, and uh, if we're ensuring that each neighborhood has representation that can help to increase that diversity. And it'll also help to make sure that there's at least one advocate to make sure that uh, city resources are being allocated to that district. Item number five. What are your specific recommendations for selecting our new police chief and restoring public confidence in our police department? So, the trust and respect of the community is, is extremely important, and it's obviously been eroded with the recent, uh, well, not the, recent, the ongoing uh, cases of excessive force from our police force. So reform has to be a top priority for our next chief of police, and he needs to understand that without that trust and respect of everyone in the community, that law enforcement becomes a much more difficult task. So I will work to make sure that reform is the top priority of our next police chief. Great, so now we'll open it up to follow-up questions from the executive board. These are one-minute answers. Uh, let's start with John. Having sit, sat through uh, three nights of these interviews, I've learned a few things. One of the things I learned is what the Parks and Rec, uh, the Parks and Green Space uh, levy was for in 2008. Do you know what it was for? So my understanding of what it was for was to allocate funds uh, to maintain the, the green space that we do have in Seattle. I don't know uh, if there are specifics that, that you're concerned about that you'd like to discuss. Uh, just as a follow-up, I learned that it was for acquisition of new parks and building new parks and there wasn't enough funding for maintenance. And that's what the next level will probably be about. That's okay. just what I learned. Yeah. I, I, it wasn't a tough question. I just, I just wanted to ask you because I learned it myself. Yeah. And I, I'm here to learn as well, okay. so I think uh, I think that's a big part of this process. Is I'll be learning a lot. Great. Okay. 
So, uh, you know, Kevin wants one, I have one as well, so... Oh, I thought I would be one. Nope. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to ask, is this your first time running for office? And uh, either whether it is or isn't, uh, what do you find has been the most challenging aspect of sort of putting yourself out there and what has been the most rewarding? So this is the second time I've been running for office. I ran in 2009 for a position four on city council. And uh, I can say, like, uh, the, I think the most rewarding thing for in, in running for office has been meeting a ton of great people and really having a much better understanding of what the people of Seattle want and what are their challenges in, in achieving that. Uh, and that's really what I'm here to do, is to help people achieve what they want to see in Seattle. I think we all know what people want, uh, and those are things that I'm passionate about. We want to get better education. We want to have, uh, we want our streets to be safe. We want affordable housing so that everyone can live where they work and uh, stay in the city instead of having to leave the city uh, just to live and then commuting into the city. We need better transportation. Uh, so the most challenging thing I think has been um, just really learning the process and who are all the people involved and uh, uh, really interested in, in the different aspects of running the city. So. Thank you. No, I have one last thought, Joseph. So, um, you're running against an incumbent, Richard Conlon. You mentioned the paid sick leave, which I think was a great example. But what, what other reasons do you feel like he, he shouldn't be on the council? Yeah, two other things that um, that are important to me. One is my discussion around the mixed housing, mixed income housing. So with the South Lake Union discussions, he was discussing the fact that we should just invest the, the income from uh, the fees in whatever neighborhood it was most economically uh, well cheapest to build, essentially. Uh, I don't think that's very, uh, I think that's short-sighted, because if we can work to create a mixed income uh, city, then that's going to help us with all the other things that we talked about. Uh, another area has been on transportation. So he's been on the council for 16 years, and we're just getting started with moving a lot of our uh, investments in, uh, in transit into the planning phase. And we just need to do a lot more to prepare our city for the for the 21st century. So people are going to expect to be able to move from neighborhood to neighborhood without driving a car. Uh, Joseph? So what would be your first policy or bill that you would introduce, and how would you work to get it passed? I'd like to focus the first policy on early learning education. So in order to get that on uh, it passed, I'm going to be working with our schools and our community members, parents, uh, and all the organizations that are working in the, in the field of education to make sure we take into account what is most needed and going to be most effective at achieving our goals and making sure that everybody in any neighborhood is entering our public schools ready to learn. That's going to take some time to put together, but I think it's super important so that we go in uh, drafting the right bill. Uh, in terms of getting it passed, I'm going to seek support, of course, from my fellow council members. I'll work with the office and the mayor and, and make sure that we can have a bill that everyone is, is happy with that we know is going to achieve the results we want. Okay, we have time for a few more questions. Uh, Michael? Um, going into this, I mean, you, you've gotten a lot of this before, but you have grown in the life of politics and, and are an accomplished person going into this. In, in anticipating being elected, what do you what do you see is going to be your greatest weakness, or what's going to be lacking in your skill set? How's it going to get you into trouble? What are you going to do about it? Sure. And don't say you're trying to do this. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I mean, so I'm a, I work at Amazon. I'm I'm a bar reasoner. I do a lot of interviewing, and I ask a similar question to folks coming into Amazon. I know that uh, I'm going to have some challenges to overcome. So one of them, I think, is related to, uh, I, I have never written legislation, right? So just learning what's most important to include in legislation. How do, what are the factors we need to incorporate? What are the things we don't need to worry about uh, with that? That's going to all be things that I have to learn. I'm going to be uh, looking for mentors. And I think I'm finding them as, as we kind of go here uh, that will be able to help me overcome some of those challenges. Um, I think another thing that I'm also working on now that will prepare me for when I am elected into office is getting to know uh, 
a broader spectrum of our uh, of our city. So going around to meetings like this and, and hearing from you all about what's most important to you as we move forward is, is going to be an important uh, aspect for me being a successful in city council. Because I don't know what you guys want and what the people of Seattle want. And not just in a few neighborhoods, not just in a few kind of uh, segments of organizations, but a very broad spectrum, and I'm not going to be effective. We still have uh, time for a couple more questions. So how would you say that your experience and skills is transferable to a city council in a policy position? Yeah. So at Amazon, the role I have right now is a principal product manager in Kindle Direct Publishing. I actually set the policy for our platform. So I'm very uh, comfortable with working with, working to understand what our customer needs and implementing things that are gonna make them succeed. So in our business at Amazon, it's about helping authors to succeed, right? Helping them to get their books published and into the world so that they can earn a living doing what they love most. In city council, I'm gonna be, and I work with authors to understand what do they need. In city council, I'm gonna be working with a lot of people and a lot of organizations to figure out what, what it is that they need to be successful in this city and to thrive. And I think, the skill set that I bring from Amazon is uh, a, ton, a lot of focus on an analytics. So we know that when we make a decision, we're making the right decision and we're projecting what the impact of that is going to be. Um, uh, efficient uh, government. Uh, so at Amazon, I've also run lean programs to make sure that any dollar that we spend is spent most uh, effectively. And I think that's important in Seattle as well. All right, time for maybe one more question. Um, so you mentioned having you, you've run once before, so you have a little bit of an idea of what this is, this world is all about. So why? I hate that I'm asking this question, <laughs> but why are you going to be able to win? Uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 So I, I learned last time what it takes to win. Um, I'm going to be running extremely hard to make sure that I connect with everybody that I can in the city. Uh, I've got a great team that I've been recruiting for volunteer work because I think you know grassroots roots campaigns are what make make these things happen. Uh, we've already raised twenty-five thousand dollars, and that was just in about you know two weeks. Um, so you know I think I've shown that I, that we can raise the money that's required to make sure that our message gets out to voters. That's super important. And uh, yeah, I, I think uh, I've got the, the people's issues on my side. I think I know what people are really concerned about. And I'm passionate about making sure that we can get those things accomplished and bringing some new energy into city council. So I think, I think together, you know, it's going to take a lot of us working together, but I think we can win. Thank you. Great. So um, we're about out of time. We want to take 30 seconds for a closing statement. Yeah, I, like I said earlier, I just really appreciate all the work that you guys do because I know how much time you've all put in here uh, over the past probably a couple weeks. Um, and so thank you for giving me the opportunity to come here and speak. Uh, I do look forward to receiving your vote for uh, to become the next city council member in Seattle. And I do commit to you that I will do everything that I can to make sure that we move our city forward in the direction that we all think it can go. Great. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you guys.